Hey guys, so it is our final rare breed study, and this is the Diary Shire Crystal. This is, um, it, it almost looks like a down breed. You can see they have very blocky locks, but there are some little tips on it does have a fair amount of grease in it but it looks like it's going to wash up really pretty so i've got my water boiling and while it does we're going to read about the derbyshire gristone from our fleece and fiber source book of course so the derbyshire gristone originated in the 1770s so i think that counts as an ancient breed in a valley called the dale of goit so the breed was once known as Dale Goit sheep. Goit is an old Celtic word for water, and I'm probably saying it completely wrong. And the valley of the River Goit, located on the border of Derbyshire and Cheshire counties in the Peak District National Park in England, is better known today for its two giant reservoirs and recreation than for its sheep. Like other black-faced mountain breeds, Derbyshire gristones are hardy sheep developed to endure harsh conditions and marginal feed. Their black faces bear white markings, yet there is no particular pattern to the white. Derbyshire gristones are pulled or hornless in both sexes. They're grown primarily for meat, but they produce a versatile fleece that warrants and rewards exploration by people who work with fiber by hand including felters who find it to have the best feltability of the black-faced mountain family. Well, that's interesting. Apparently it felts really good. Consistent, dense, and with enough crimp to give yarns good loft and resilience, gristone wool is easy to spin and feels pleasant on the needles or loom. It is typically finer than the wool from other black-faced mountain breeds. In fact, gristone fleeces have won top honors at major shows in Britain beating out entries from finer wool and long wool breeds. So they sound like they're very interesting. So their fleece weight averages five to six and a half pounds. Stable length is four to eight inches, usually around six inches. So let's have a look at this. I'd say that's about two inches. It's a shorter fleece, but that's okay. The fiber diameter is in the 27 to 31 micron range, so the finer fleeces could be next to the skin saw. So the lock thick characteristics. I dropped my lock. There it is. So blocky staples, very short, short pointed tips. Very true. Not particularly distinct from each other and tend to disengage from the fleece in long strips. Crimp is well developed but disorganized, very true. May contain some black fibers or kelp. Well, we'll find out as we get into it. So for using it, samples had, for dyeing, our samples had a very subtle bit of luster, which suggests clear colors with more light reflection than in other breeds in this group. We may have to try dyeing some. So fiber preparation, they suggest picking and spinning from the locks or combing. Carding will work well with the shorter fleece or a long staple selection if staples are cut in half. Easy to draft, longer staple fleeces can be low twist bulky singles and other lengths will make nice yarns and weights ranging from lace to bulky. Unusually fine for this group of breeds, Derbyshire Gristone is one of the workhorse wools like a classic knitting worsted. A uh, versatile choice for projects that call for mid-range wools like sweaters, blankets, and weft-faced or balanced weave structure. It's best known for exceptionally good quality and a fine wool for a breed that is part of this family. So, there's a picture of the Derbyshire Gristone. You can see it's a black-faced sheep. And we are going to get to cleaning this yarn. My kettle is boiling. I've got my power scour. I'm going to get it on to clean. And if I notice anything unusual in the cleaning, 
I will come back and let you know. Otherwise, I think we're going to dye some, so I'll bring you back when it's time to dye. See you in a bit. All right, I'm just getting ready for the second bath, but I had to share with you how white this fleece is. It is gorgeous. I mean, there's dirt and some black hairs in there, but it is washing up to such a bright white. I am getting very excited. And we are going to do some dyeing after we're done this bath. So I'm just going to get it on for its second wash. And then I will bring you back to do some dyeing. Because I want to see how this gorgeous white fiber, look at how it just falls right into that. I want to see how this dies up, honestly, because it's coming up to such a nice white, especially for something that imitates a down breed, although it's not feeling like a down breed at all. All right, I will be back. All right, we finished the second wash, so I have not rinsed it. There's still soap in this, which actually helps the dye for some reason, but we are going to dye some of this and see how it takes the dye. Now I'm just using apple cider vinegar, hot water, and some dye. Now the downside of having soap in it is it doesn't want to sink. I'm going to add just a little bit more. And let it soak up all that dye. Now, well, that is setting. I'm going to rinse up the other fiber and get it out to dry. And we will be back. Here is our Derbyshire Gristone. All washed up. It came out so white. I am very, very impressed with how white this fiber is. Now it is still damp, but I wanted to comb it damp to control the static. So I have my mini combs. I'm going to take, here is a lock. You can see how it has the little tips on it, but it does have a very blocky lock on it. This is surprisingly soft and it's very white and I'm quite enjoying this so far. I'm really curious to see how it's going to spin up. So let's make our samples. There we go. So we're going to comb this. There is um, some sand in this, but it should all just fall out as we comb. Oh, it just combs beautifully. So easy. No tangles or nothing. It's beautiful. Just set that aside. And we'll go this way. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. Okay, I've done one pass either direction and look at that. It is gorgeous. All right, I'm just gonna diz this off the cones. Oh, there is, there's no resistance there. It just slides. It's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Well, now I'm in love with this fleece. <laughs> there we go. Now, there is still a bit of debris in there, so I probably should have combed it a couple more times. But I just couldn't believe that in two passes... I got this. Like, this is flipping amazing. It's soft and poofy. Wow. 
Okay, I'm going to do another one because that was just, that was just so fun. I can't even begin to explain to you how easily this combs. There's no resistance. The fibers just open right up. Here's a good chunk. Lash that on. And here's another chunk. And we'll lash that on. This is just amazing. Okay. Here we go. There's like zero resistance as I'm combing it. Like there's 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 no resistance at all. You know, some fleeces you go to comb them and you're like and then you have to go back and just grab the tips and try to untangle it. There's no resistance here. It just glides. It's freaking amazing. Wow. I am loving this. All right, I'm going to comb this two more times just to get out any of that debris. But you can just see how easily it glides from comb to comb. Here's the debris that came out. All right, last pass. All right, Let's see if there's a lot of debris in there. It's not too bad. There is a bit of sand in this one, like I said, but the sand is just falling out as I comb it. Now, because it is still a little damp, it's holding on to little bits. Oh, that's a black hair. Okay. They did say that there might be some black hairs in here. Oh my goodness, it glides off so quickly that it just drifts apart if you're not careful. I'm using like next to no pressure to do this. I'm just gently wiggling it so that I'm not yanking on it and pulling it apart. Because it just glides. Like seriously, it just glides. This is going to draft like a dream. All right, there's some combed top for a test spin. Now, here's the stuff I dyed. It came out this beautiful periwinkle blue. I'm going to comb up some of this, but I'm going to do it in a different manner. Normally, if you have disorganized locks and you comb them up, you just lash them onto the comb and then you fight your way into aligning all those fibers. I get the feeling I'm not going to have to fight with this at all, that it's just going to glide into alignment. Let's find out. Oh, <laughs> like literally, guys, I'm applying no pressure. It is just gliding. Wow. This just combs so beautifully. And the color is so nice. That periwinkle blue is just lovely. Now I've learned my lesson. Don't pull hard, just wiggle. Just wiggle. Okay, there is, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a black hair in there right there but it's not bothering me so I'm just leaving it alone I just can't believe how this glides it's going to be an amazing spin all right so we have some white top we have a little bit of colored top Set that aside. Now let's see what other preps we can come up with here. 
Now, I suspect that taking just a little handful of this, and we're just going to fluff it up and spin from the cloud. I get the feeling this one might work brilliantly. There's a little bit for cloud spinning. And we're going to make a Rolex. This is short enough that it shouldn't be a problem being a roll egg. We definitely don't have to cut the fiber. Oh, even carding is beautiful on this. Wow, what a fleece. <laughs> oh, I am just getting so excited to spin this, guys. It's freaking amazing. So you can see how it's just, it's just a lining, like no effort, nothing. It's just brilliant. All right. There's one row leg. I'm going to make another one though. Make sure we have enough. Oh, I'll make a colored roll egg. Why not? We have it. Let's use it. Now this is still pretty damp, so it might not make the best roll egg, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Cause you know, I'm impatient. I don't wanna wait for it to dry. <laughs> I wanna do it now. And there we have a colored roll egg. And then I do want to try just flicking a few locks. So these ones still have more or less have their lock structure intact. I'm gonna grab my flicker. Oh, gee, what was I doing with this last? I am horrible for just setting my tools aside and forgetting to go back and clean them. There. Get all that out of there. Oh, there's still some more in there. Okay. This is freaking amazing. Look at how beautifully this opens up. It's amazing. I think I have another new favorite fleece. <laughs> I can't say I have favorites. I just love them all. But this is gorgeous. Okay, we're going to. Flip the butt end first. Now I'm seeing little bitties. I don't know if you can see them or not, but there are little white bits. Let's see if they just comb out. They do, so I'm going to guess it's not scurf, because my understanding of scurf is it sticks, and this is not sticking. We just have this beautiful fiber. There it is. Let's flick out a few more and then we'll go to the wheel and we'll do a test spin and see how we're going to prep the rest of this fiber. This is gorgeous. I can't even tell you just how impressed I am 
with this fleece. This is just gorgeous. Like it just, <laughs> it just opens up. It's just no tangle at all. It's just like, yep, I'm ready to roll. All right. So here's our preps. We have some flicked locks. We have a picked cloud. We have rural eggs in white and blue. And we have some roving in white and blue. I'm going to grab the spinning wheel and we're going to do a test spin and see how these work up.